This is Jack Dempsey in the 1920s shot on 35mm film. This is Muhammad Ali in 1974 shot on 16mm film and blown up by a 35mm print to fit a widescreen format. This is a young Riddick Bowe, Lennox Lewis, and Roy Jones Jr. in the 1988 Olympics. This was shot on 16mm film. This was the 1972 Olympics, shot on 35mm film. And this is what the best quality of the biggest, most important fights from the 1970s, 80s, 90s, and early to mid 2000s looked like. Do you see the problem here? From the 1970s all the way to the mid to late 2000s, being one of the most poorly preserved eras in boxing as practically all of it was shot on readily available and inexpensive tape. And this brings up a prime example of one of the greatest historically preserved sports, the NFL. The NFL forming NFL films ran by filmmaker Steve and Ed Sable in 1962, which will change the sports industry. Their division was able to document and preserve every training camp preseason games of every team for years to come which can not only be used for pieces back then but also today to show the newer generations how the sport was back then the skills of the players and the atmosphere where one can truly have an appreciation for what is being presented the NBA for the most part was shot on 16 to 35 millimeter film most notably fans had a great appreciation of Michael Jordan after watching the last dance series most new generations will be turned off from watching old standard def tapes of legends. Jordan's final season with the Bulls was not only filmed in 35mm as seen right here but it was also filmed in 65mm IMAX film reel and printed on 70mm for the year 2000 documentary Michael Jordan to the Max. How big does that look on IMAX? Does that look like a gigantic bucket of popcorn on an IMAX screen? Last Dance used a lot of used and unused material from this film, including what NBA films had to make a cinematic masterpiece telling the story of one of the greatest or the greatest dynasties in basketball. So what went wrong with boxing? Most fights back in the day were shot on tape, which will be the live broadcast, but there will be film cameras shooting alongside the broadcast, which would be shown in newsreels, theaters, and kept in archives. Part of fighters' contracts for prize fights did contained film rights as these were shown in the theaters. As tape became readily available, easy to duplicate and send out, and inexpensive compared to film, promotions and networks opted for everything to be in tape to make as much dollar as possible. Despite network knowing the long-term benefits of shooting on film as early as the 50s. Now what are the benefits? The only thing you will have to do with film to bring it back to life is to digitally rescan it. Shooting on 16mm is the equivalent of shooting on a 2K camera. 35mm is 4K, but some of the best prints according to Quora can be equivalent to 8K and 70mm is equivalent to 8K and above. This is the reason why motion pictures continue to be shot on film. Tape is equivalent of 240p. It can't be rescanned and when blown up digitally it looks awful. What gives tape whatever clarity it has is on analog TVs where the scan lines give it its sharpness. Perfect example playing retro games on the tube TV versus a flat screen TV. With AI technology becoming readily available, it does a good job of cleaning and sharpening up standard death footage in some situations. I can't win this fight or that I won't knock Thomas Hearns out. But it still has plenty of faults and situations with many subjects on frame, which is not good for boxing. Now there's quite a bit of YouTube pages out there that post fights from the film era, and these are from a standard deaf source. Even when ESPN rebroadcasts old fights on ESPN Classics, it's a rebroadcast from an old broadcast 
from the standard deaf era. The scan of a scan of the fight was meant only for tape and to be viewed on a tube television. Now this clip here is an outdated analog scan of Ali vs. Liston 2 from an HD source as stated. This is a 2K rescan of that very same clip. This has been cropped in to fit a 16x9 widescreen. In 1993, JVC released a demo of one of the earliest high-definition tape cameras called HD DVHS. This shot up to 1080p at 60 frames per second. Just a year later, in 1994, this format will be shooting alongside the broadcast of Japan's first super fight between Joichiro Tatsuyoshi and Yasue Yakushiji. These are the only samples I have from this broadcast. I downloaded this nearly 10 years ago, and the uploader not only cropped it in a 4x3 format, but it seems that the broadcast itself made 4x3 borders to seamlessly run with the rest of the fight. So as early as 1994, this technology was being used in boxing in Japan. It is unfortunate that promotions and networks never decided to invest having a secondary team shoot these fights, as the NFL was actually doing this for the Super Bowl since 2000. FIFA as early as 1998. Here is Argentina versus Japan and England versus Argentina in the 1998 World cup. From what I've seen, it looks like NHK and SBS owns the full rights to the HD broadcast of the entire 98 to 2002 World Cups, as there is not a trace of this footage used in any of FIFA's coverage of the two World Cups. What makes things worse is viewing fights in the original intended quality. In the early days, when HBO started airing fights in HD, before it became a standard, promotions never thought it was necessary to keep copies to the HD broadcast to the fights or attain the rights. Perfect examples, the zone's copies of Mayweather vs. Hatton and Delahoya vs. Mayweather. This is what you get, this is what it's supposed to look like. Here's Pacquiao vs. Morales 2 and 3. Judah vs. Mayweather, which was broadcast in HD, but their archives only has the standard def 4x3 international broadcast. Even HBO's master tapes of classic fights such as the Barrera vs. Morales trilogy and Hagler vs. Hearns, which looks far superior to what Top Rank has. Keep in mind, HBO's version is cropped to fit widescreen. Then you have the fights that can't be shown by neither online streaming service, which is in a complete licensing limbo, like Tyson vs. Lewis, any Tito Trinidad fight on HBO, so that means you'll never see a digital release of Hopkins vs. Tito, and the list just goes on to where you'll have to rely on a VHS rip, or if it's during the HD era, hope that you have the original HD shared file from that capper. It's insane that the best quality of Trinidad vs. Vargas is not an HD HBO broadcast, not from some guy's DVD collection, no, a Japanese network TV rebroadcast. Most have seen this fight in this potato quality, and never in their lifetime, maybe when the fight first aired, saw it a hair similar from what is presented here. The amount of care I've seen of preserving this sport is almost equivalent to the studios involved preserving one of the most culturally important films in the past 30 years, Blood In, Blood Out, which I probably have a better chance of seeing seeing a restoration of that film than I do for having all the historically significant fights shot on film, rescanned to be viewed online, and all the greatest fights, including the pre-fight show and all, on streaming platforms in its original quality. So with that being said, who's to blame? Boxing promotions or the networks? And on top of that, how boxing history has been ruined. For more videos like these, be sure to like, share, and if you're new, subscribe. Subscribe to the Patreon for Patreon-backed projects and early access. I'm Alfa Sancho, and I'm out.